soon, as soon as it started going into riots, that was it, the atmosphere changed. Everyone was just going crazy. No one was listening to the police. Um, but at the same time, the police weren't listening to us. People in Hackney, they were focusing more towards the police and I saw a lot of aggression towards the police. It's like, at a particular time, I didn't see a lot of young people trying to loot or steal anything at that time. I just saw a lot of anger vented towards the police, which I wasn't surprised about. They're talking about youths and black youths and that being on the streets, but I'm telling you now, there was big people there, multicultural people, taking stuff from the building site and setting up barricades for the police. Camden was just, it had a funny feeling to it, like everywhere had a funny feeling. All the kids on my estate were just riding around with their hoods up, everyone was a bit angry. And when I was walking past people's houses, I could just hear like, Camden's gonna kick off, it's gonna kick off in Camden. I actually saw fire from far away and I was like, oh gosh, that looks like it's near my house or my house. And I kept on walking like kind of worried. And when I get, when I actually got down there really close, I saw the fire and I saw some people crying. I walked into the crowd, all I see is a man coming out with laptops in his arm. I was thinking, oh, what's this? And I walked into the crowd, the guy's just pushing me around. I was like, oh, I'm in a riot. Come down and see my high street was in tatters, you know? Like, man's them really warring and robbing for nothing. Like, that's it, robbing for nothing. I see a couple things happening still. Like, happening at Tesco and that. But man wasn't even involved. So, this Tesco here? Yeah. yeah. Bad, so bad, bad people, people running, running around. Valley Club is running, running around, valley up, hooded. Some not, some big. 22 London boroughs in total were affected. On Monday the 8th of August, while the unrest continued in London, blew in and clashes with the police erupted in Birmingham and Wolverhampton. It was bad, but it was raw, like a film, you get me, car? Like, it was madness in London, and then when it come down here, obviously I don't live too far from here, you got your local, your local shop, your local petrol station, on the news talking about madness has gone on, so. There was tension, the tension was like, it was awful. I was really, really scared because the guys were holding like anything. They were holding weapons, they were holding sticks, they were holding just anything they could get their hands on, they were holding on to. There were further reports of fires, looting and clashes with the police in Liverpool, Manchester city centre and Salford. When we heard like Mike Dobbin was killed, like people was just like think just shot like wondering what it's about and that in it. He used to come down here, his brother. So people like knew him round here and that like, and like the atmosphere was just could feel the tension and the friction that like, people like could tell like something was gonna go on. Because what the police done? Because yeah, that's because it, it, it only started when, when when that happened. It just went sporadic all over the place, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Just happening everywhere. If he didn't get shot dead, then I don't think all them riots would have happened. People screaming. Buildings are blast. What the fuck? How the hell this all start? Because police murdered our brother Mark. This was the spark which ignited the flame that spread pandemonia around the UK. Communities destroyed, homes burnt to the ground, shops cleared out and looted by everyone around. Violence is spreading, war against the police, who despite their authority are seemingly weak. Control is gone, it's well out of hand. Things are so desperate in this lawless land. Vigilantes are out now and in full force. BMP armed with bats and Sikhs with holstered swords. People are living in fear now, the atmosphere is tense. The conflict of everyone's feelings is incredibly immense. I'm longing for this to be over, for normality to be restored, so my children can carry on living and play happily outdoors. Go back out there on the Sunday and see it for myself, I was like, whoa. 
the cars were still burning, the smoke was still thick, um, the shops were completely gone, smashed in, um, people lost their houses, their homes, their children's rooms. I absolutely condemned and continue to condemn the kind of mindless violence and robbery and criminality that went on. But what sparked those riots was, was people being angry about very real issues and feeling that they no longer had, they had no voice and no one was listening to them. I think um, the main emotion I would say is, is saddened, really. Um, watching the pictures on the news and getting that sense of all the things that were happening and, and I think people's reactions to it, it was, it was really quite hard to watch. I think I felt devastated to see the place where you're living and growing up being destroyed, to see people's lives being destroyed. As communities began the process of coming to terms with the devastation around them, the real cost of the riots were starting to become apparent. Many people suffered terrible losses. I received a phone call from my uncle saying the building is on fire. Obviously you think, all right, the building's on fire, but you know, everyone's possessions is still, yeah. you're thinking, yeah, the fire brigade's gonna come and sort out whatever not, but obviously they found the fire brigade. The fire brigade said they couldn't come because there's no police support. So obviously I received then about 10 minutes later, my uncle phoned me back and he said, the building's gone. It's just like, I was just up, really upset in it, really. Like, my brain weren't even thinking straight. Like, I don't understand why the people that done it had to go to that extent. In Tottenham, the local leisure complex was set up as a crisis centre to help victims who had lost their homes and businesses. Donations of food, medical supplies, clothes, bedding and furniture came flooding in until the centre was unable to take any more. Today there was a lady um, with, with four young children. Her home was burnt. She lived above the carpet places, but there's quite a number of flats above. And her home was burnt, completely burnt out. I remember seeing her when she came in this morning and she was, you know, it made brought tears to my eyes. And when she left, she was in such better spirits from having talked to people. I might have spent quite a lot, I spent a fair bit of time with her. My little boy is free, so he doesn't really, you know, know anything, but my two girls, it's like, they're always asking, about like what's happened and like, their photos and pictures and toys that they've got there. It's hard to deal with still. It still gets to me sometimes because it's like I'm just in a different world now kind of thing. Like thinking what's going to happen. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Oh no, the fire was out of order, man. Like where I was doing my business here, yeah, I seen like like there was, there was a shop here yeah, and a house above it, innit? and someone had burnt the shop out and then a family upstairs like lost their house you know, they, like, you know, they, they weren't really involved in that like, they were throwing shit out of the windows to, to stop people coming, coming, coming into the shop downstairs innit? and like, in the end like, they lost their house because of other people's selfishness really innit? So. Burning down people's houses I think that's totally bang out of order like full stop I think there's got to be something wicked um inside you to, to kind of just go down and burn down people's stuff. To see the place where our mothers and our grandmothers do their shopping being destroyed in that way uh, and the realization that to destroy somewhere where you live then it shows a deeper disconnectedness and a lack of engagement for the place where we're growing up and, and, and where we live. Yeah, it was nuts, innit? Because man, if you use the, the high street, innit? Like post office, Iceland, Morrison's, we have to use them shops every day. And Primark, them shops are for the broke people, innit? And we're broke, so why are we going to lick down the broke shops? 